which I feel I've been asked to open it. Um, it could have been anybody else, but I've been asked to open this, and I'm very, very touched uh, by that. But let's just review the story, because it's uh, an interesting and important story for the school. When I first arrived in 2002, I remember um, a meeting with Jane Timmis and uh, the ladies at Radley Nursery, Subrix, that's right, at the time, and they came to me and they said, you know, Master, uh, we've heard talk that you're going to build a nursery. Is there any truth in this? And I could honestly say, with my heart on and on my heart, there was no truth in that as far as I was concerned, that conversation had had with me. And I said, no, there's no plans at the moment. I was just settling in, getting my feet under the desk and all those things. And that is absolutely, genuinely true. There wasn't a plan at that time to build a nursery here at Beechwood. Uh, we had a wonderful relationship with the Montessori uh, down the road. Pupils have come from that school to Beechwood for many years and done very well. And it was an excellent, excellent nursery. And then a few years later, I think around 2004, 2005, Superix came with David and said, you know, we're not going to run the nursery uh, anymore. Would the school be interested in running the nursery? And I said, yes, certainly, why not do that? It seemed a very sensible move. And still, there were no plans at that stage to build a nursery here at Beechwood Park. I remember a conversation in 2009 with Barry Brook. Um, is Barry there? Do you remember that conversation, Barry? And we were wandering around, and there was a building which some people may know of and remember, uh, which was situated where that lovely Volvo is, is about now. And only a few months ago, called the Vernix Building, and Barry and I said, you know, that might be the place that we could do such a development. Um, and things went on, and all sorts of other things have been considered, and we have, I, don't, I think it's okay for us to say this, we've had feasibility studies, um, which uh, the governors and the SMT have engaged with, Michael Carver again, was very important in, in help, helping us to, to do that. We had architects, AD architects that we worked with, the feasibility studies to see how the buildings of the school work and where would it be sensible to do the next development. <coughs> uh, we had all that and we considered uh, buildings um, uh, at the back of the school you know, near uh, the headmaster's house, St Giles, uh, and we considered buildings down there. And of course we have to have conversations with conversation conversation with conversations with conservation officers and, and English heritage, uh, God bless them. And, uh, and, the, and the planning people uh, as well. And they had all sorts of interesting views about where it might be sensible to, to build from a heritage point of view, because of course, you know, the, the buildings are uh, the, the very, very um, important and very significant. The Queen Anne Mansion is, is you know, a very significant piece of architecture. Um, and uh, that has to be respected. Uh, I do remember a conversation with with English heritage, and I'm very happy to pass this on, you know, I don't think there's anything marvellous about what I'm saying. And they turned to me and said, Headmaster, what we need you to do is actually to ask your architects to design something that is completely unremarkable. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I was rather taken aback, and I think the architect was too, because I don't do anything with a view to it being unremarkable. <laughs> um, and least of all, spending a lot of money designing buildings. And, you know, it seems to me that, that, that there's always an opportunity to do something mark remarkable and memorable in very much the way that that generation that built the beautiful Queen Anne mansion did. You know, and what is it about our legacy? Um, so that's the sort of story of where we are. And it wasn't until really just a, about a year ago that we, after going through that and doing the feasibility studies and looking, you know, look, um, thinking about what we needed, about what we wanted, that we started to explore the options of this sort of building. And Helen and I and Ann Punter and Lynn Roberts and Alison Curran, we went round and we looked at buildings and we thought, what would work here? Uh, and so that was a year ago, and now we have this fantastic state-of-the-art building, a uh, beautiful building in cedar um, and aluminium, and it's really going to be very special as it matures and you will watch those colours change. It's a state-of-the-art building. I'm going to show you. I hope it's all going to work. 
Um, you know, you can <laughs> walk through doors and things come on, and it's all wonderful security, and it's a beautiful space in there with all the facilities that the very little ones need. <laughs> plus, plus, plus. Uh, and I would like to thank the team that has worked so hard uh, over recent months to bring this together. Helen Dalkin has given up so much of her time and her care and her concern to bring this. The team in the Montessori, to Heyman, all these people have come together. The governors, Rob Warren has come on board, and Matthew Stillwell, Less and Less Construction, has been just the most wonderful company to work with. Bill, the site manager, was brilliant, and it really has come together very, very well. So we're hugely proud of this, um, because it represents so much. And again, it's Beechwood, it's the community coming together, everybody working together, having a shared aim, and making sure that it happens. And this is it. So it's a great pleasure uh, to open uh, this nursery. I declare the nursery open. Yay!